What's up, my beautiful Glamazons? And welcome back to my channel. And welcome to your favorite story time where I give you guys the hottest tea in the land. Before we get into this video, I want to give a special shout out to my homies over at Noom for sponsoring this video and working with me and supporting my content so that I can continue doing what I love and what you like to hear. Noom is a lifestyle platform that I really like using in my everyday life. It has changed the game by combining science and psychology to help you understand you and why you do the things that you do and why you make the decisions that you make in regards to your health, your wellness, your fitness. Throughout your journey on the Noom platform, you are setting goals for yourself, but you're also figuring out your why. And your why is that that core reason why you want to live your healthiest lifestyle, why you want to lose that weight. What is, what is your ultimate purpose? And then they help you get there by not just giving you the resources and the tools to, you know, keep track of your calories and track of your water intake, which it also does that as well. But my favorite part about Noom is the psychology aspect. You guys know that I love me some psychology. That was going to be my major in school. No matter what it is that you're trying to accomplish, Noom is going to be the perfect platform to help you get there. The first step to figuring out and solving your puzzle is by understanding yourself, like genuinely understanding who you are as a person and why you make the decisions that you do. Because honestly, it affects everything, who we are as people and our personality. The things that make us us really affect our day-to-day -day decisions down to what we eat and why. So I think that this would be something that you guys would greatly benefit from and find it super convenient and really beneficial. And I'm all about learning about yourself and self-improvement and self-reflection. And I think Noom helps you do just that. So if you guys are interested in Noom and wanna kinda get to know yourself a little bit better and figure out why, you do the things that you do and why you eat the way that you eat and your relationship with food and goal setting as a whole, definitely check out Noom. All you have to do is click the link down in my description box and take the free and quick Noom evaluation. Get started with a custom plan that'll help you reach your goals. If there's any piece of advice that I could give younger Nikki, now that I know what I know, I would definitely tell her to take the time to actually invest into your health and wellness. Noom is so much more than just dieting. Noom is something that that will help you not only achieve daily goals, but also the big picture goals, which they talk to you about as well. They, they really dig in deep and figure out what is your big picture? Why is your health and wellness important to you? And then they help you get there by not just telling you what you should eat and the calories within that food, but also teaching you the psychological background and equipping you with tools that will help you have a healthier relationship with food that you can use now and for years to come. So thank you so much to my friends over at Noom for partnering with me on this video, supporting my content, and also extending an amazing offer to my Glamazons for you guys to live the healthiest life that you possibly can. Definitely take advantage by clicking that link in my description box and trying them out and let me know how you like them. But without further ado, let's get into the story time. So now we're starting to dip into the tea of my work life, okay? A lot of you guys started watching my videos because of all the tea from like the different high schools that I was moving to and all the little drama that was a part of that. And you would think that after high school and going into adulthood that, you know, the drama would kind of like stop. Nobody tells you that it's not going to stop. Like the stop is nowhere in sight. I will say, I don't know what it is about my presence. Weird situations will find my ass. And if anybody is going to walk in on it, if anybody is going to catch it, it's gonna be me. I don't know why it's been that way since I was a little girl, okay? I don't know if I just have a sixth sense, but this is what happened. I'm obviously working in an office, okay? And I'm working for this huge company and uh, they deal with like legal contracts when it comes to real estate, pretty much. We had a bunch of in-house attorneys. They would look over the paperwork, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's what the company did. It was a huge company, made tons of moolah, right? So I get hired on and I got hired on by a staffing agency. And if you guys want some more information about staffing agencies, let me know, because I will definitely give you the tea on that because that's how I found most of my jobs. No lie, girl, you tend to get paid a a lot more with staffing agencies than with like getting hired on. There are pros and cons to each, but let me know if you guys want some more info about that. But anyways, girl, so I got placed on this assignment by my staffing agency, right? And it was a temp to hire position. So that means that they're gonna hire you temporarily. You're gonna be a temp, but you have the potential to be hired on permanently if you do well. So those are the types of positions that I love being placed on because ultimately I did want to belong to a company. I wanted to be hired on as an employee 
of theirs, like for real, for real. But I, I need to dip my toes in. I learned through this experience that not all offices fit the same, okay? And it may not be a good fit. So I liked having the wiggle room of being able to work somewhere for a few months. And if the fit is good, it's great. But if they like me and I don't like them, well then I don't have to stay. I'm not obligated. And I, I have a choice of whether or not I wanna accept the position. Capiche? Okay. So this was one of those situations, all right, girl? So they placed me at this job and it is this humongous building. Okay, I wanna say it was probably like the second biggest building I had ever worked in downtown. And at this time, girl, this was around the time that I didn't have my car, okay? And like everybody knows what happened with my car, my scion, right? So like my, my shit was messed up. So I was on public transportation on the bus, okay? So I had this parking ride that I used to live by. And so I would walk there every single morning, each. Rain, sleet, snow, it did not matter and then I would ride the bus to my job and this was the job, right? Many of y'all that have ever been on public transportation, y'all know that it is very much time sensitivo with the bus schedule because you have to know when the bus is coming and going, obviously. And like, they don't come at your leisure beach. Like they come at their own time. So, and a lot of times you either have to leave super, super early just to like be on time or you're gonna be late. I remember having to leave hella early in the morning just to make sure that I was at my job by 8 a.m. But it meant that I was there at like 7.20 in the morning, you know? I say all that to say that I liked this job a lot because they had unlimited overtime beesh. You cannot tell me that. You cannot tell Nikki that this situation is unlimited overtime. So because I had to ride the bus and I used to get to work so early, I didn't mind because because all I had to do was go inside my building and clock in and I'm getting paid for this, so it's fine. By far, y'all, this was like my most favorite job, okay? But on top of it being like an unlimited overtime position, I also had a really cool boss. We'll name him Justin, okay? Now, Justin was pretty young for his position. I'd say he, would, he was like in his early 30s. He was a higher up. He was an executive at this company and he was my direct supervisor. So like many of the companies that I work for, this was a huge company and it took up at this time it took up two floors of this current building that we were in and each admin had their own supervisor that they answered to and he was mine so like no other admin had him as a supervisor which I thought was super weird when they onboarded me and they introduced Justin to me as my direct supervisor and I was like okay and y'all he had nothing to do with like admins or anything so but anyways it was a good fit because he was a hella cool boss I liked him a lot because he wasn't a micromanager. We all know how things worked out with Veronica trying to do that to me. So like, <laughs> he traveled a lot. Um, he had a corner office with like the floor to ceiling windows, bitch. And he did, y'all, he used to let me use his office. Anytime he was traveling, anytime he was out of the office, he like specifically told me if, if it's too loud out there, you don't feel like being in the middle of it, you are more than welcome to come work in my office. He had like a little toaster oven in there and he was like, you can make your breakfast in my toaster oven. You can use my mini fridge like basically giving me all access to his office bitch and best believe <laughs> best believe this was just the beginning of my euphoric fantasy of coming into that office and when he wasn't there and literally pretending that I was a CEO bitch like I would come in early in the morning and like with my little Michael Kors bag that I got on sale and I would walk straight to his office and go sit behind his desk and be in there working all day like the other other admins that would come and talk to me, like anybody else that wanted to come and find me, I was in Justin's office and they would walk in and I'd be like, hi, how can I help you? <laughs> like, anyways, y'all, this, this position was super fun. I got along with my boss, Gray, everything was fine. There were a few other admins that I worked with, not all the time, but like, you know, y'all know what admins do. So if we ever had to do something together where we're like planning something, that's when I would talk to them. So it was a good handful of them. I'd say like three or four. The main one that we're gonna be talking about today, we're gonna name her... Mm, I know y'all always wait because it might be your name. Naming them like after what I feel like they would be named by their personalities. So she seemed like a, she seemed like a Madison. Madison was one of the assistants. She worked as like, she worked the receptionist position, but she was also like an exec's personal assistant. And she and I were cool. Like, you know, we were just coworkers. I don't really know her like that. She used to make all these like little slick ass comments to me about not understanding the true vibe of the office because Nikki gets to be in Justin's office or whatever. So she would mention that out every now and then. So I kind of peeped it and I was like, I'm gonna keep my eye on you because I feel like you be hating. So 
ultimately, Madison was cool. Like we got along, it's fine. Then we get called into a big conference meeting and everybody has to attend, right? So we all go to this meeting and all of the executives, including my boss, Justin, uh, announced to us that, that we were gonna be expanding the business. And with that expansion was gonna come an expansion within the building that we were currently working in, right? So they tell us we're gonna be in high gear, um, that HR is gonna be super busy. We're doing a lot of onboarding because we're expanding to different suites within this building for different departments and department heads are gonna be hired and you know, like specialists are gonna be hired and then, you know, more admins for that department's gonna be hired. So like a shit ton of hiring was about to take place. And so like, this was like a big old process, right? Immediately they start like giving us orders, us meaning the admins. And because we were gonna be responsible for furnishing these new suites, okay? So, and I was not aware. So the minute that they start like doling out these, you know, things that they need done for these new suites, they're looking at all of us admins. And like I said, there's like three or four of us. And we're like, immediately we're like, wait, what? Oh, oh, okay. And they're like, yeah, you know, we're gonna need this amount of desks, this amount of chairs. Of course, we're gonna need the office supplies. We're gonna need deliveries set out to, you know, be delivered there at the suite. We're gonna need kitchen supplies, all kind, all kinds of shit, right? And immediately I'm looking over at Justin. He knew that like, I'm sitting here looking at him like, why didn't you warn me? Like, I did not know that I was coming in here with pew, pew, pew. Like, you gotta get all this done, right? And he was like, but he had been out of town for like a few weeks before this meeting. So he was just like looking at me like, tell that for him, this was just like, I didn't know that it was just gonna pop off like this, you know? But I make my list, right? And they're like, we need all of this done, all of this done. They're giving us dates and like all of this shit. So it's a huge to do. And, and of course, all of us are immediately super stressed out because this is all the execs that are expecting this out of all of the admins. And we're just like, bitch, what? Like, we have never furnished entire suites in a building before. So this is gonna be interesting. So we leave that meeting and we're hella stressed and we don't even know where to start. We find the company that we're gonna be getting this furniture from. We need to figure out delivery dates. We need to, fi like, we need to go to these suites. There was so much that we needed to do, right? Of course, they assigned someone to be like head of the admins. It's an older lady. She had hardly ever worked with us ever, like even said a word to us ever. We'll call her Anne, okay? So they designate Anne to be a temporary head of the admins. And so they were like, you know, Anne's gonna help you with this and this. And if you have any questions, go to her type of shit. And we're like, okay. Okay, I go back to where I usually sit and I get an email from Anne and, and it's a group email with me and all the other admins and she is calling for a meeting and says that, you know, obviously we need to have a meeting. We have a lot to figure out, a lot of delegating of responsibility to do. So let's plan a meeting, which we do. So all of us admins go into this conference room and she starts delegating responsibility and giving us the contact information for the vendors. We already knew who was gonna be like supplying our kitchen supplies. It was the same person, office supplies, same person. Um, and But she was giving us like vendor contact information for the furniture spot. And like, that was gonna be the biggest to do in my opinion, because <laughs> bitch, I don't know about y'all. But like, I get really nervous ordering furniture for myself, much less somebody else, much less a whole ass company. Because you see, I have a terrible habit of, of not measuring beach. I don't know what it is about me, but I will get so excited and see something and be like, oh, that's cute. And then just click add to court. And then I didn't even measure. And then it gets to my place and it's too big or way too small. And then guess who she delegates that responsibility to? Me and Madison. Okay, both of us together as partners to furnish these suites, plural, all right? There was three of them, three different suites on different floors of this huge ass building that we were responsible for fully ordering and furnishing, okay? Do you understand the assignment? Because I sure as hell did not. <laughs> But this kind of brought Madison and I together in a whole different way. So she and I start emailing more and more every single day. Okay, have you contacted, you know, the furniture vendor? Yes, okay, have you got the catalog? Yes. So they sent us out this huge catalog and it was legit like a fucking, it was a huge, it almost looked like an old school phone book beach, okay? So our job was to get the new key cards, to go to these suites, to measure each room, and then to get furniture as similar 
as possible to the current furniture that we have going on and the suites that we already have, right? So we have to do all of this on top of our everyday regular schmegular tasks, okay? Not a problem though, not a problem, because guess what? This place has unlimited overtime. So I was like, if I gotta come in early, if I gotta stay late, that's not a problem. I would do that, make my money. Madison and I go down to the security office of the building and we let them know what company we're with, the suites that we're, you know, gonna be leasing now and the fact that we need key cards to, you know, start furnishing and shit in there, right? Two separate key cards for both Madison and I to these suites. And keep in mind, because this company has unlimited overtime, um, our key cards work 24 seven. It didn't matter if it was two o'clock in the morning, it will get you into the building. It will get you into the suite 24 seven access. I could not believe it. Like I had never been entrusted with so much before. And I was just like, wow, like this, this could open up entire kingdoms, bitch. Throughout the next week or so, you know, Madison and I are taking a few breaks throughout the day and we're going to these different suites and looking at them. There were three different suites. Two of them were hella huge and one of them was pretty small. And these suites, y'all, are total complete offices. I'm talking about with like front areas where it's supposed to be like a receptionist area and then like different rooms and then like little kitchenettes, but there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. You just have to make make it make sense with the furniture that you're getting. Does that make sense? You gotta get specific cubicles to kind of match that shape. Yeah, it was a whole thing. So Addison could not come into work as early as I was for, I forgot what reason she gave me, but she gave me whatever reason and told me that she could not come in earlier. Cause I was like, girl, I could be here at like 5.30 and we could do all of this and like get all the measurements and stuff. She was like, nah, I can't be there that early for you know X, Y, and Z reason. Ended up deciding to start staying late after work and doing this situation, right? Because our bosses were completely fine because, you know, we did have our normal tasks to do. We decided to save this portion of our pro our big project for after hours so that we could get the overtime and be able to get this done. Two, three days out of the week, we would stay until like y'all 8, 8.30 at night in these suites, measuring every damn wall, dimensions galore, okay? And I would like to remind you that I hate numbers. I hate them so fucking much. I hate numbers so much. Uh, look, I know that this is terrible of us, but really was it? Like, who was it hurting? Nobody, it was after hours. Of course, like the first few days that we're doing this, we're like measuring every wall and you know, everything's all good, but it's repetitive and it's boring and it's just like, it's tedious, right? Y'all tell me why, like the fourth or fifth time that we did this after work, tell me why Madison, <laughs> Madison shows up to one of the new suites where she's gonna be meeting me and she has like this big old bag with her. And we always had our stuff with us. Cause like right after that, we're leaving, you know? But she had like this, huge ass back on her tell me why beach she like treated this as a picnic and she brought <laughs> she brought like some little finger sandwiches and stuff for us to eat and then girl she brought a bottle of wine pop popping bottles and then so we start we definitely popped a few bottles in these sweets, right? So we're like, so then it turns into something fun and we are just like having a ball, get our work done. And like, we would not be like measuring tipsy. Well, maybe we were a little tipsy, it's fine. It could be an inch or two off, it's fine. But we made sure to get our work done, but we definitely had some fun with it. So we end up getting all of the measurements for the first two suites, which are huge and have multiple rooms in them. So end up like creating a blueprint of each of the suites and writing in the dimensions of like, you know, how big the space is and like what we're looking for as far as furniture. So we were doing our job, girl, but we definitely were leaving that building tipsy. Fast forward, this is a long ass process because after we got the measurements, now it's onto this huge catalog, okay? So then we started meeting up after work to go through this huge catalog and like star the ones that we're interested in and the ones that are meeting the measurements right and that are gonna fit well in here and all of that. So there were numerous, numerous, times that we were staying after work for hours and hours on end, getting all of this data, getting all of this information, getting a list put together of the furniture that we're gonna need and the SKU numbers and all of that shit, okay? The good thing was is she lived downtown. She would literally take the mall ride, like what I used to do, and she lived downtown and she would walk to her spot. And at this time, I didn't have no car. So because I was working so late into the night, David would come pick me up. So it worked out perfectly. As time was going on and we're staying after work, 
work and we're, you know, having a little sippy sip, we start getting to know each other pretty well. And, you know, we tell each other our stories, where we came from. She was from out of state too, but she had been in Colorado for years at this point. She went to college here, you know, all this and that. She came, she came from a pretty well off family, okay? She's definitely a trust fund baby. I don't even know, like legit, while I was in the moment, like while I was feeling all warm and fuzzy, why did I ask this girl, like, why are you working? <laughs> I legitimately asked her, why do you work if you're a trust fund baby? Like y'all, she, month tea. And you know, she had the classic, I don't wanna be bored answer. And like, you know, I definitely wanna build up my resume, but yeah, like she admitted to me that she could live off of her trust if she wanted to for the rest of her life. And I was just like, Poof. like, we were definitely from different worlds, but we started connecting on a whole different level. And she was so funny and so smart. And just like, she had like this party streak in her that I really loved. And I don't know, like she was just really cool, right? I tell her about David, everybody hears about David. And you know, um, but you know, just our situation where we're living, all that, whatever. Well, of course she starts telling me about her experience in relationships and she had just gotten out of a pretty serious relationship, but she had been single for almost a year. Like she was talking about like her dating nightmares and like, it was so entertaining to me. Cause I was like, wait, what? Not this time she was going on different dates. And so when we would have our different sessions, she would be fresh off of a date from the weekend before. So I used to get like all the tea, right? So, and it was so funny, like all of these different dates that she was going on. And y'all, like a lot of them were epic fails. So we would be sitting there cracking up, just cutting up in these empty suites for hours, <laughs> just talking about her experiences going on these dates, right? So I know that my girl Madison, you know, she had a very full, very <laughs> exciting life and she was going on dates every single weekend. Fast forward and anybody, I don't care where you work, I feel like this happens anywhere that you work, but anybody that works in offices, we all know the office flirt. You know him, you recognize him, you see him in your mind right now, don't lie. So we had an office flirt and we're gonna name him Armando. Yes, he was Latino, all right? Like, it is what it is. And he was over there acting like Rico Suave up in that office. And so, y'all, nobody, nobody was exempt from his flirtatious ways, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, Armando was not creepy. He was not creepy. He was just funny and he would lay it on real thick. And But he never made me or any of my girls feel uncomfortable or weirded out. Like, he never tried to follow nobody after work or nothing. Like, he was just a little bit too friendly. Like you could tell that he was purposely like being very flirtatious. It was just in his nature to be very flirtatious, okay? Armando worked with IT. He was the one that would help us reset our passwords. He was that one, okay? That like anything that was happening with our system, Armando was the one that was sent up to help us. So that's how we knew him. And that's how he was always hanging around and like being all flirty and shit. One day came around and Madison and I decided to have lunch together. We really weren't having lunch. We decided to go to Starbucks and get something to nosh on, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere that I was being placed was always always near like downtown. So we weren't far from the 16th Street Mall. So that's where we would go all the time. So, and it was like a five or six block walk. It's a beautiful day and we're walking towards the Starbucks and we get there, we order everything, we get our stuff and we sit down for a little bit outside. While we're sitting out there, all of a sudden we hear, hey ladies, it's Armando. He's got like food in his hand and he's like, oh, hey, what y'all doing? And like Madison, so, you know, we all start talking. He for real hopped over like the little barrier, the little fence out there and sat down at our table. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, how presumptuous of you, sir, to like just, he didn't even ask. He didn't say like, can I join y'all or like nothing, right? And like me and her were talking about like the juicy shit she was getting into with her dates. And I was like, why are you interrupting? So he sits down and we just all like start cutting up and just like talking about whatever, right? But while we're talking, he like looks down at his watch. And he's like, oh, I gotta go. I guess he had left for lunch before we did. So he had to leave earlier. So he takes off. Instantly when he takes off, like something shifts in the air with me and Madison and like, but it seemed like a little tense. So we finish up and we start walking back to the building. Just talking about whatever. And then out of nowhere, Madison looks over at me and she was like, hey, can I ask you a question? 
You know when your friend hits you with, hey, can I ask you a question? It's about to be tea. She was like, don't laugh. And I was like, you know I can't promise that. But I was like, what? Would you consider Armando like good looking? Bitch, I know you are not. And she was like, no, no. Like, she was like, no, like, I'm just asking. Like, I just wanna know like, is it me or like, does his personality make him kind of hot? And I was like, um, Armando is like the classic, and I was honest, y'all. I was like, Armando's like the classic, you know, office flirt. Like, like he could be cute. I just don't see him that way. You know what I mean? Like, like I never looked at Armando and was like, damn, he's fine. Uh, she shut it down so fast after that. She was like, oh, okay, I was just wondering, like, you know, sometimes he seems hot, sometimes he doesn't, but like, you know, it's just Armando. And I was like, yeah, okay. Y'all, I peeped it. I peeped it immediately. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> you brought him up for a reason. I definitely peeped it, but she shut it down and I was like, okay, whatever. So we walk the rest of the way back to work. We go back to work, everything's normal, everything's fine. Fast forward, right? And we're still, you know, dealing with the new suites and stuff. And then we start getting furniture delivered. Y'all, we furnished the first suite entirely. And when I tell you pain in the ass, pain in the ass, like we had to meet the delivery guys at the elevators and like get them in the freight elevator because they can't use the regular elevators. So we have to go all the way to these creepy sites of the building and help them up the elevators and then tell them which suite it is and then like monitor what they're doing in there. So just like standing there. And like a lot of times Madison and I couldn't go together. So it was like either just Madison or just me. And we're like with these delivery guys and it's super awkward and we're standing there for literal hours because they're going up and down this huge ass corporate building. Like, I don't think you guys understand the process of furnishing these suites skyscrapers. Cause it is an ordeal when I like, ma'am, it is an ordeal okay so we get the whole first suite furnished and by the time it's said it done y'all like this i'm just sitting here like well, wow this looks amazing like we had a beautiful all of the desks were like oak wood and we had a beautiful front desk as well we ordered a few little planters we stocked up the kitchen like the cubicles were nice and straight and put together right everything was looking so good when we finished that suite we had to have the execs do a walkthrough okay which was so nerve-wracking so they and they didn't just do a walkthrough like I wouldn't have cared but they wanted us there to do the walkthrough with so that they could give us their notes if they wanted something different. And it made me so nervous, right? So Madison and I, we meet up with the execs, including Justin. We meet up with them in this new suite. We get there first, y'all like, we have like a little platter of like cookies up there. And like, we're supposed to make it a whole thing. Like Anne told us to make it a whole thing, right? Ta-da moment for the execs. So that's what we did. We even had fresh flowers at the receptionist desk. The execs show up. And the whole time my boss is like making faces at me like, wow, like this looks great, like wow. Immediately they were floored. They really enjoyed the way that all the furniture looked and they like they liked the placement of everything, which was like my biggest fear was that we were gonna have to redo all of this. Like what if we didn't do it right? I was so nervous, but y'all, they fucking loved it. And they were like, oh my God, like, yes, this is the best use of the space. And like, I really like how you guys did this corner. And it was just, oh, it was amazing, right? After that beach, they for real gave a lot of responsibility to Madison and I, to furnish without a whole lot of monitoring or management they were just like okay we see what y'all can do we trust you let us know when it's done there was some back orders on the furniture that we wanted for the big suite because it was very similar to the one that we had just done and so instead of doing that other big suite second we ended up tackling the smaller suite because they had the furniture to do so we're staying after work measuring the small suite getting the furniture monitoring them putting it together okay this time only one exec does a walkthrough. He loves it. It's a small space. We did what we could. Now keep in mind, when Madison and I would finish a suite, they immediately were filling those seats because while we were doing all of this work for the planning and the delivery and all of that, HR was on it with onboarding and getting people trained, getting them onboarded, getting interviews done, like all of that. So by the time we were done with the process of furnishing the suites, those seats were being taken up, IT's coming, setting everyone up, like it's happening like that, right? With Within the next two, three weeks, that next suite is completely done and there are people working in that suite, right? And um, there was like a whole area 
of the suite that already had employees in it. So as the suites were opening up, they also needed admins to help with that specific one. And when it came to the smaller one, I don't know what happened, but they didn't hire an admin in time for when we had the suite done and employees were coming in there and working. Somehow, some way, they didn't do that. So then they went to the admins that they did have and asked us to kind of switch off every few days to cover that suite at the front desk until they got a receptionist hired. So within the first few days of that suite being opened, I was, it was my turn to cover the front desk of that suite for the day. Instead of going to my normal floor, I go at a completely separate floor. I go to the smaller suite. It is so weird. The desk ain't mine, the, my stuff, it ain't just, it ain't mine. It ain't my people. I don't know nobody that is working down there. It's all new employees and you know, like we're figuring out the phone system and all of that, right? Having to like set up voice smells like it was a whole thing so I go and the day's going on as normal and like we're getting the first like deliveries for the kitchen and stuff and it, everything is brand brand new this day there were going to be a few more employees that were going to be joining in the suite and like a handful of three four something like that they just needed sign-ins and they needed their credentials to be able to sign into the system but who do I have to call Armando. So I get on the phone and I'm like, hey Armando, what you doing? And he's like, nothing, but my day's more beautiful with you. Like stuff like that. And I'm like, if you don't stop it right now. So I give him all the info and I'm like, hey, I have, you know, X amount of people up here. They need sign-ins. Can you come help? And he was like, you call for my help. I'll be there. Like, you know, you know, you can count on me. Like, you know, just stuff like that. And I was like, whatever, Armando, I'll talk to you later. You know, Armando makes it to our suite and he comes in on his same bullshit. He starts helping everybody and he was a really social person. So he like starts getting people to laugh and like, you know, just kind of easing up the tension because everyone was new in the suite. And he starts setting people up, you know, getting their computers set up and all of that. Of course, like any other job when you're at the front, like you have have to have somebody that's gonna relieve you for anything, you know, to like go to lunch. Of course, I needed to be relieved for lunch that day and the person to relieve me was Madison. So Madison comes down to the suite, she relieves me, you know, she's like looking around and she's like, this is so weird. Like, you know, the fact, like to see people in here and I was like, I know, right? While we're, you know, just chit-chatting, I'm grabbing my stuff to head out for lunch. Like I keep seeing her like look over at Armando and I was like, like, I just said that I for I was like, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she like looked at it, she was like, what? And I was like, nothing. Nikki, stop. And I was like, no, you stop, okay? And of course, as I thought, when I got back to the office and I, you know, went back up to the suite, who do I see at the desk? Just chit-chatting. Armando and Madison and like he's like y'all he's doing like the whole desk lean and it's like you know I'm literally I literally walk in on her cracking up like her face is red she is laughing so hard and I was like both wow like you're a comedian like I want to laugh like they were vibing like they were hella feeling each other and I was like I'm gonna be real I did not see this coming like on a serious tip I did not see this coming <laughs> y'all she stayed for like an extra 20-25 minutes talking just fucking around with him just playing with him and shooting the shit and like all kind like flirting they were flirting okay but anyways y'all the day goes on everything is normal i just noticed that okay no big deal fast forward now it is time for us to furnish the big the other big suite finally they have the furniture in we gotta make sure everything is set up for them to deliver it. Something happened with one of the pieces of furniture, like a desk or something, where they were like, hey, I know we said that this is back order, but it's actually not coming back in stock, but we have this one that's comparable. And like the dimensions are a little different, but it's kind of the same. And so like, do you want it? So we have these new dimensions to measure out. So of course, Madison and I use that as an excuse to stay late, get some overtime, and go in there to measure for the new piece of furniture, right? So, of course, that's what we do. She brings a little bottle of a little sauce on. We go in there, we do what we do, we work, and then we have some fun and take a little sippy sip and, you know, as per use. As I said, I was carless at this point, okay? So when I would, you know, stay late and work, um, I would text David that, you know, I was ready because he never had like a set time. He would legitimately wait to get a text from me. And I would text him and be like, hey, babe, like I'm done with work. Can you come pick me up? And then I would stay up there until he texted me that he was downstairs, right? Texted David, 
he told me he was on his way. I waited it out and then, you know, fast forward, finally I get a text from David that he's downstairs. So I told Madison, oh yeah, David's here. And she was like, okay, cool girl. So we start saying our goodbyes. I grab my purse. I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling good. I was feeling it, okay? Like I was feeling that warm, fuzzy feeling, all right? Hey girl, like I'll see you on Monday. And you know, I take off out of the suite. I go into the elevator, I hit the first floor. This is a huge ass building, but it's like all glass down there. And I could literally see David David on the other side of the glass, like street parking, waiting for me, right? So I go out the set of doors and like the minute that I step outside, I'm reminded, bitch, it's cold. Where's your jacket? I look up and David's like looking at me. He's in the truck and he's like, come on. Like he hated being downtown. Like he was so tired. You know, he'd been working all day and he was like, come on, babe. Like, hurry up. And I was like, okay. So I book it. I run out to the truck. I open the door and like I set my purse in there and I start digging around. And David's like, what are you doing? I left my jacket upstairs and he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, so like, I'm just gonna, I was like, don't worry, don't worry, it'll be really fast. I was like, I'm just gonna get the key card. I'm gonna go up there, I'm gonna get my jacket, I'll be right back. I knew like it was gonna be the weekend, y'all, cause I kept saying, I can't leave it there until Monday. Like I can't leave it there until Monday. Like the janitors might come in and throw it away. Like I was so, this jacket was for my grandma and it was very expensive. It was a very expensive jacket with like the fur lining on the hood. No, I'm not leaving it, no. And like, no, it was my favorite, no, I'm not. All right, babe, just be careful. So I drop my purse off and everything so I could be quick. All I need is my key card and I take off running. I head right back into the building. Security lets me in and I head right back into the elevator. I hit the floor that I need and I'm just waiting. And I'm like, oh my God, how this isn't gonna make fun of me because I left my shit there. Like I knew that she was still there. She was gonna be packing up everything, making sure we didn't leave no remnants behind. That's very important. It's like we didn't want people to know that we were like, you know, taking a little sippy sip in these sweets. So I'm like, I'm bracing myself and I'm like, she's gonna be talking so shit whatever whatever this suite is at the very end of the hallway when you get off the elevator so the elevator door opens and i start walking down the hallway as per usual and i start hearing madison laughing like hella hard and hella loud like her laugh is like reverberating off the walls in this damn hallway and i'm like what the heck? immediately i'm like she must be on the phone with somebody i'm thinking it must be one of the dudes that she's dating because keep in mind she had a very interesting life, girl. She was like, you know, going on her dates and stuff. Keep hearing her laughing and she's like kind of giggling a little bit and then she stops. And I'm like, okay. And by this point, I'm getting closer to the door. This door is wood, okay? There's no like windows or anything to see in it. There's like this little box on the left-hand side and you have to scan your key card on there. I go to walk in and like I look up and the first thing that I see like immediately as I step in is Madison and she's with somebody else. And then I see man's feet. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? Y'all, why are her and Armando in this sweet kissing bitch? Why? I didn't get to see the actual kissing moment. By the time I opened the door, they were literally like backing up from each other. And I was like, oh. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just forgot my jacket, Madison, I'm so sorry. I just forgot my jacket and like, it's my favorite and it's super expensive and like, I just could not leave it. Fucking vomiting at the mouth right now. Like I'm just like giving all these excuses and just like, blah, 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 blah. like I was so awkward. Like I didn't know what to do. Y'all, they were both just stunned and like would not say anything to me and like just like stared. And like Madison's looking at me like, bitch, what the fuck? And like, like, okay, I'm just gonna grab my jacket. I'm just gonna go. So I grab my jacket and I like look over at her. I'm like, all of a sudden I just hear Armando go, be safe. Literally a five second ordeal, okay? I like grab my jacket, I just feel so awkward. Like I gotta go, I gotta go. Like I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be a part of this, right? Look back and like Madison is just sitting there looking at me and I was like, okay, thanks Armando, you too. It was so much for me not to just like bust out laughing, but I did not want Madison to hear me or, or Armando. And so the minute that I got into the elevator and them fucking doors closed, bitch, I was like, Oh my God, like I was cracking up. I was dying. I was dying because like I knew, you know, like you're that one to like get with the well-known flirt. Like everybody knows not to take his ass seriously. And so you'd be looking at your friend like, really Armando, like really? So I was just dying laughing, right? I get into the truck and I'm laughing my ass off. Y'all already know, David always knows all the tea, right? On the way home, I'm giving him the tea and I was like, oh my God, I just, 
caught them making out. Like David was like, really? That's what y'all be doing at work? And I was like, don't look, look. okay. <laughs> y'all, by the time I got home, I had a text message from Madison. I forgot how she opened it up, but she was like, I can't believe that just happened. Or like, I'm still dying laughing or like something like that. We're like, she was definitely like, bitch, what the fuck, you know? So I text her back and I was like, hold on. Like, so we start texting back and forth. Cause like, I'm like, hold up. Are you and Armando a thing? Like, how did that happen? I had questions, bitch. Like, how did he get there so fast? Like I literally went downstairs, realized I didn't have my jacket and came right back up. Like, was he in a closet? Like, was he, in, where was he? And so, you know, I asked her and she was like, girl, we planned on getting drinks after you and I were done. So he just stayed in his office. Office, and then I texted him when you left and I was like oh so when you said that you had plans that night you met with Armando oh I did not know okay once I left she was just like okay Nikki's gone and he rode the elevator up two floors according to Madison they had been talking for a little bit by this point but that was the first time they kissed and she was like I I allowed that to happen because I was a little drunk you know, like we, we have been like having a little sippy sip and like, I don't know, before I knew it, like we were kissing and she was like, and that, that was our, that was our first kiss. I was like, stop. That was y'all's first kiss. And she was like, yeah, dude. She was like, I swear on everything. And I was like, what's well, I am so honored <laughs> to have been a part of yours and Armando's first kiss. And she was like, Nikki, shut up. And I was like, wow, best believe we had a very good laugh about it the next Monday when I saw her. Cause I was like, Hey, Hey, Armando's girlfriend. And she was like, no, no. <laughs> they had a few dates. They had a few hookups. And then after that, she started seeing somebody that she really liked. And um, I guess Armando was kind of like a fling for her. And I think she was a fling for him too. Cause like he definitely was not one to take shit serious. So, but I was there for their first kiss and I feel super, super honored. Like I said, if there's anything to find, I will find it. I don't know what it is. Like I'd be minding my own business. Like I went up there with the intention of getting my coat, okay? Not to be a part of some weird office romance. So if you ever forget anything, girl, and you have to backtrack, just be careful. You never know what you might be walking into. And don't date anyone you work with, okay? Like don't do it. I cannot tell you guys how many times I have seen that go awry to shit and a dumpster fire. But anyways, y'all, that is my story for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. If you did, you already know what to do with that like button. And of course, if you would like to see more like it, definitely subscribe so you're notified anytime I put up new videos. Um, here's my socials if you guys need some more Nikki in your life. I hope you guys are doing well. I love y'all. I'm sending you guys all of my love and my prayers. And don't forget to check out Noom to kind of get to know yourself better and why you do the things that you do, especially when it comes comes to food and what you eat and your health and wellness goals. Um, all you have to do is check out the link in my description, take their super quick and easy evaluation, and they can help you with your first steps of getting your own custom plan. And I think you guys would really enjoy it. So definitely check them out. I love y'all so, so much. And I will see your fine ass in my next video. Peace out y'all. Be safe, be smart.